Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Inspired Life Ministries. This is Pastor Kofi Bryant Sr., my husband, and I am LaCheryl Bryant, pastoring along with my husband. The web address is www.ilm247.org. We are so glad that you took time to view this broadcast, to live chat with us, get your Bibles, your pen, your journal, and let's get down to learning the Word of God. God bless you. And let's enjoy the word. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right. Let us go into the word of God. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. First of all, I'm very excited to be before you today because this opportunity to speak to you this morning is an opportunity for us to get some things done. Yes. Amen. amen. And so it's all about getting things done, Pastor. That's amen. why we're sit, standing before them today, and that's why they're sitting before us. Amen. Amen. So <clears throat> it's an early morning situation here, and my voice is cracking, but let us get it cracking. Amen. amen. All right. So listen, I just want to bring conclusion to the nature series that I had started. If you remember, some weeks back, I talked about the concept of hibernation. I asked you and I to come out of hibernation so that we can make an impact on the generations to come. I explained that we were in a hibernated state, that we were sedated, if you will, that we had some state of of, of, of stillness where we weren't moving about. And we discovered that we weren't moving about because of fear. We discovered that we weren't moving about because of pain, past associated pain, things that we were dealing with. And we decided that the pain from those circumstances, Pastor, yes, causes caused us to go into a hibernated state, a, a state where we were still functioning, still breathing, but not effective. See, pain can cause you to either be effective or non-effective. When you don't decide to do anything with the pain, when you don't grow, when you decide to become bitter instead of better. See, when you become bitter instead of better, that's like hibernating. See, because you're holding back who you are Amen. because of how you feel. As if how you feel was the equilibrium or the the, the exchange for someone's soul because you decided to hold back somebody died whether that death was a physical death or whether that death was a marital death or whether that death was a financial death you held back who you were to them and you were somebody's solution and when you held back they experienced death in an area that you were supposed to bring life to yes. if you were functioning effectively as a kingdom person. Yes. See, and then we said away from that. And we decided to get ready for the noise. Get ready for the fact that when you step outside your house and you get inside your car, you might just roll over that thing called the cicada. We discovered that the cicadas were coming. And by now, the cicadas have come. Now, just about now, when the temperature is right, they have come out of hibernation. Just about now, when the elements are correctly positioned, when the temperature is right, the weather is right, the ground is soft enough for them to climb out of, now you have been noticing the cicada. We discovered that the magical cicada, that thing, that insect that comes out of the ground every 17 years, 17 years, we discovered that that magical cicada comes out of the ground every 17 years, and we discovered some things like this. They stay underneath the ground for 17 years eating off of tree sap. We discovered that they can time things by eating the tree sap, and they can tell when the tree sap changes, when the texture and the taste changes of the tree sap. They can say, ah, another season is here. Another year has transpired based on the differences of the tree sap that they're eating. And at that 17th year, 
they magically emerge. They emerge in billions, right? Millions in your very local area. We discovered last week that the cicada is doing what it naturally is supposed to do. Amen. Pastor, we discovered that all things, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says what's natural comes first. And we discovered last week that all nature is always doing what it is supposed to do. Every insect does what it's supposed to do. You'll notice that the squirrels came out of hibernation. And you see them in plenty right now. Gathering what? Nuts. You'll see bees. You'll see all these types of insects. And everyone is doing what they're supposed to do. We discovered, Pastor, that we, however, as human beings, are the ones that tend not to do what we're supposed to do. Amen. And right now, you as a believer are supposed to come out by the droves, out of hibernation, and you're supposed to replicate the conceptualization of the cicada, meaning how he came out and did what he was supposed to do or is about to do what he's supposed to do. We, you and I, are supposed to become the reproducers of our own kind. Amen. We discovered last Amen. week that the cicada came here for the sole purpose to procreate, to reproduce after its own kind. Yes. See, we discovered in Genesis that we are to reproduce after our own kind. We also discovered last week in Genesis that a seed of a kind is produced within itself. That is, within you and I, or within a plant, or within an animal, or within an insect, yeah. is a seed yeah. like itself to re reproduce after its own kind. See, we discovered last week that the cicada, pastor, comes and the cicada female, after the mating call comes, and you should be hearing the mating call right about now. That noise that sounds like a... And even... All right, my interpretation, right? But you're hearing the noise. And lately you've been hearing the noise, and now you're going to hear the noise a lot stronger. As the weather changes, as the weather changes, the male makes a great sound. He vibrates his body, has an element on his body that shakes, and it makes noise. And the purpose of that noise is to attract the females because it's a mating call. Amen? It's a mating call. And when that mating call comes, the female comes and they mate. When the female is laying eggs, we discovered that she burrs her legs inside of the tree limb. And it creates these grooves inside the tree. And we discovered that the cicada plants her eggs inside of that tree. When the egg develops a little bit more, it drops from the tree to the ground and buries itself all the way down to layers in the ground. Wow. And for 17 years, that cicada, the billions and billions and billions of babies, go down in the ground and they eat off the, seat, uh, the, the tree sap for 17 years, and then you got it at that 17th year, they fully mature. They start off like little white eggs, little white moving things, right? And after 17 years, they emerge in that shell that you see outside of your house, that you see on your tree, that you see on the side of your house and on your sidewalk, and then they emerge to be the scary looking or nice looking thing that you see flying around. Amen? Now, we discovered that they reproduce after their own kind. They're not here to make the world a better place. They're not here to, uh, well, they do that. They do make the world a better place. But they're not here for that. They're not here to, to eat. They're not here to, 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 to party in relation to with other bugs and everything like that. They're strictly here to reproduce after their own kind. Amen. And they, we, we discovered last week, as, actually, that they come in droves because, droves meaning large numbers, because the, the enemy who comes to take them can't take all of them. Right. So they come in large numbers because once you finish eating a bunch of them, you don't want no more. So when your dog is walking around eating the cicadas later on this week, he's not going to want a whole lot of them. That means the other ones emerge out of the ground 
and reproduce after their own kind. You see, their concept is to reproduce. Amen? Amen. And so that's where we left off last week. So this week, we're going to conclude. This is our nature series. I'm Pastor Kofi Bryant Sr. And I would like for you to be fruitful. If you have a note-taking device, and if you're exercising mental notes, or a note-taking device like my beautiful wife is doing right now, then I want you to title this message, Be Fruitful. Watch this. B-E-E. -E. Fruitful. B, letter B, E-E. -E. Fruitful. Amen? Turn with us Amen. to Genesis chapter 1. I need a Bible. <laughs> Genesis. Oh, thank you. Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to begin reading at verse number 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. When you get there, type amen. Hallelujah. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And God blessed them and said to them, Be what? Fruitful. Fruitful. Multiply and do what? Fruitful. Fill the earth or replenish the earth. And so do it. And in the, in the Amplified it says, Using all its vast resources in the service of God and man. Amen. My Lord. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living creature that moves upon the earth. Amen. See, that very premise is saying to us, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Develop fruit. Amen? Develop some results Amen. so that when someone picks and chooses to eat, they gain nourishment in their soul yeah. from something that you produced. Amen. Amen. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. As a matter of fact, after you're fruitful, multiply. Yes. Replenish the earth. That is, reproduce after your own kind. See, last week, Pastor, we discovered how are you reproducing. Amen. We discovered that you're reproducing. We just wanted to know if you're reproducing hate. Or if you're reproducing love. Hallelujah. We wanted to know if you were reproducing a cheating spirit or a truthful spirit. Amen. See, remember, we discovered that the person trying to come to your house right now and rob your house is someone who looked at someone else who was robbing houses. Mm -hmm. See, we reproduce after our own kind. Whether you know it or not, someone is doing what they saw you do. Amen. So we discovered last week, we need to be what? Christ-like. Hallelujah. So that someone else can reproduce Christ-like activity. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So turn with me to Matthew. Matthew. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. All right, Matthew 28, we're going to begin reading at verse number 19. Amen. Matthew 28, 19. As a matter of fact, Pastor, would you do me a favor and read that for me? Yeah. Would that be okay? Sure, I have a King James translation. Thank you. The Word of God reads from Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 19. And I'm reading from the King James translation. And it reads, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. My, my, my. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Glory be to God Hallelujah. forevermore. Yes. You hear what he said. Hallelujah. Thank you. He said, God. go ye, you and I, go Kofi, go and say your name. Michelle. That's right. Go 
teaching, preaching, baptizing, right? In whose name? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So what I'm saying to you is the Great Commission is what you and I are supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be being fruitful. We're supposed to be multiplying. And we are ultimately supposed to replenish the earth. Remember, the cicada is coming to replenish the next batch of cicadas. That's it. When they drop, they just come after they finish mating. They're going to die in a few weeks. And the generation that laid the eggs won't be here anymore. Mm, mm, mm. My Lord, my Lord. That's, that preaches right there. The generation that laid the eggs will not even be here to see what they produced. Because 17 years later is what they laid that will emerge. So I'm going to ask you, as you are doing what you're doing, saying what you're saying, acting the way you act, are you realizing that you may not even see the results of what your actions are? So, isn't it best for you and I to live according to our faith? Isn't it best for you and I to live, to move, and to have our being in Christ Jesus so that what comes up after we're not here no more is Jesus? Hallelujah. How would you like to leave some Jesus in the earth? Hallelujah. How would you like to leave some residue of Christ? Amen. This is what you and I are supposed to do. We're supposed to be fruitful. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me draw some attention to a natural concept to bring about this spiritual truth, okay? Amen. Here's the natural concept. Everybody right about now is seeing yellow dust on their car. Yellow dust around. I myself am taking medication to avoid sneezing, to avoid itching, and, and, and having that antihistamine feeling, you know what I mean, where you need to scratch on your internal parts. It is because of pollen. See, my flesh is allergic to pollen. Come on, preach with me this morning. Preach with me this morning. I know you got some, excuse the, no pun intended or no, no commercial, but some allergy medicines. I was about to name all the allergy medicines, but I won't do that because you're not going to get no, I need some royalties for that. Amen. But you and I are taking what now? What season is it? Allergy season. And allergy is caused mostly by pollen. Yeah, that's right. Pollen, the yellow dust that you see on your car is pollen. And pollen is very vital. But as for me, it's allergic. It causes an allergic reaction to my flesh. I'm going to ride that metaphor for a minute. Pollen, which is a vital thing, is allergy to my flesh. But beneficial to the kingdom. Excuse me. Beneficial for the world. Amen? Because see, pollen, when it's reproduced, in a plant produces what? Fruit. And what did God tell us to do? Be what? Fruitful. Amen? And for some of us who are more healthy, especially my beautiful bride likes to eat this fruit. Amen? Now, Pastor Kofi needs to learn how to eat fruit. Amen? I need to learn how to eat more fruit, more veggies, etc. Right? But the concept that I'm trying to lay out to you this morning is that pollen is an agent of change. But at the same time that it's causing something else to grow and form, it's causing an allergic reaction to myself or to you. You see, pollen, I can liken that unto the Word of God. See, Word of God is life for my flesh. Hallelujah. But it causes an allergic reaction to what I want to do in my flesh. Hallelujah. That's See, good. you and I want to be mean at a moment when someone is mean to us. Right. You follow me? Amen. And that's a form of pollen. The word of God telling you to smile instead of frown. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. The word of God telling you to turn the other cheek instead of strike back. Amen. You understand? Yes. See, that word of God is that thing that's causing life somewhere else when you implement it. But it causes your flesh to be having an, aller an allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. See, because you and I don't want to be kind mm -hmm. when it's time to be angry. We don't want to be um, um, free when we want to be fearful. When someone does you wrong and you want to go into what we call hibernation, the Bible is telling you to go be fruitful. Your flesh wants to hibernate, hold back on someone because they were not doing what you wanted them to do the way that you wanted them to do it. Amen. So you're not going to smile. You're not going to give them love. You're not going to do something or you're going to withhold yourself in some way. God tells you to tell them something and you're not going to say it because Amen. you don't want to deal with that person no more. Yes. Or God has you to go to your neighbor and say to your neighbor or love your neighbor, right? And you don't want to even talk to your neighbor. You'd rather hibernate who you are, hold back who you are, Amen. pause on who you are, That's lie true. dormant in who you are. Amen? Amen? But you're not supposed to be that way, Christian, Christ-like one. You're not Amen. supposed to be that way. Amen. See, in your flesh dwells no good, no thing. good thing. That's Amen. what Paul said. Paul said, in my flesh dwells no good thing. Kofi, in your flesh there dwells no good thing. Amen? Amen. So pollen, let me just give a, a quick description on what the pollen is. Amen? Pollen is a, a, a fine, powdery substance. And it's typically yellow, consisting of microscopic grains discharged from the male part of the flower or from the part of the male cone. Okay, that's pollen. Now, the pollen, just to get a slightly scientific with you, you know a flower when it emerges? A flower, when it emerges, has, if you can see this, inside of this flower, there is a stem, and that stem is called the stamen. Stamen, S-T-A-M-E-N, stamen. And when that, and then so, and so check this out. That stamen is what makes pollen, the fine yellow dust. A little further, if I were to move this and show you a little further down, that's called the pistol. The pistol is spelled P-I-S-T-I-L. Pistol. The pistol of a flower is covered in a sticky glue-like substance. And so the pistol of the flower with the glue-like substance, if the pollen, the fine dust, lands on the pistol, it attaches itself. You can imagine if something's sticky and I sprinkle some flour over it, that flour is going to stick to the sticky substance. Yes. When that happens, that is the plant reproducing after its own kind. Amen. Lord, have Amen. mercy. I just described intercourse for a plant. And the concept of the intercourse of a plant is when the pistol is germinated by the pollen, which was produced by the stamen, it produces pollen. And when the yellow dust lands on a sticky substance, it becomes pollinated. Mm, that's good, Pastor. And when it's pollinated, it generally produces fruit. Amen. So who amongst you, type Amen. with me, Loves apples. Who amongst you like loves oranges? Who amongst you eats so healthy that you would dare eat an almond? Amen. I know that you're out there. You know, it's just not me. But I'm working on it. And you pray for me. Hey, put that in your prayer request for me, would you please? Okay, thanks. So I'm saying to you that what you like to eat is produced by pollen. What you like to eat is produced by pollen. 
What does this nature concept have to do with you? Well, here's what it has to do with you. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. And we're going, let's say we're going to go to, um, let's go with uh, 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'll say amen when I get there. You type amen when you get there. <laughs> amen. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 through 9 is where we're going to begin reading. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Amen. Verse 6. Do you mind, Pastor? No, I don't mind that at all. All right. Verses 6 through 9. Yes. First Corinthians, New Testament, chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. And the word of God reads, I have planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God that giveth the increase. Verse 8. Now he, now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. My Lord, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, you so much. See, what is he saying there? What is God saying there? God saying through Paul, right? Because that's who wrote that. Is saying, I'm a paraphrase. One man plants. Yes. Another man waters. Amen. But as it relates to growth, Hallelujah. God gives the increase. Yes. Hallelujah. You Thank and I are God. supposed to reproduce after our own kind. Hallelujah. Now what happens with that reproduction is up to God. Hallelujah. And up to that individual. Hallelujah. Amen. To be used by God. Hallelujah. But it's up to you and I to live holy. Yes. Even as he is holy. Hallelujah. So that the production that we produce lives holy. Hallelujah. But we can't control whether they live holy or not. So you know you can have a child, raise a child up mm. in the way that they should go, and the Bible says that when they get old, they shall not what depart. Depart, but you can't control the mistakes they made before the mm. departure Good takes word. place. You can produce the seed, but you cannot produce the results of the seed, or for the the, the seed. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible's telling you and I to reproduce after our own kind. Thank you. It's telling us in 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 9, that one man plants, another man waters, but God gives the increase. Hallelujah. Amen? Yeah. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I'm going somewhere with it, and I'm almost at my conclusion, by the way. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, New Testament, still reading from the King James translation. Amen. And the word of God reads, Beware of false prophets mm -hmm. which come to you in sheep's clothing, mm -hmm. but inwardly they are raving wolves. My, 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 my. When you go to verse 20 for me. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Mm. See, Jesus is warning us in this particular context of false prophets. So you must understand, family and people of God, that there's some counterfeiters out there. There's some perversions out there of the truth. Amen. There's some perverted fruit. There's some things that look like fruit, but when you pick it up and eat them, you die. Mm. The concept is sort of like the fruit or, or the wheat and the tear. Remember we talked about that last year? The wheat grows up. And the tear grows up with the wheat. And we call that tear, the, um, uh, the, the technical name for that tear was the, type it in if you remember it. Amen. But I can't remember right now what the name of that, that, that um, yes, thank you, Lord. Darnell. Right? We discovered that the tear was called Darnell, and Darnell was poisonous. Yeah. Poisonous. So when you ate the, 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 the Darnell, which looked like a wheat, 
you could die from it. So the Bible was telling us to separate the wheat, what we can't eat, from the tear that is poisonous. Amen? Amen. So there's some fruit out there. Some people that are producing works that look like it's the fruit of God. But in the end, they're in. It's dead. See, you'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. And some trees produce corruptible fruit. That's what he's saying right there. Amen? And, and, and you don't want to... Well, actually, if you turn to Matthew 3, Matthew 3, chapter 3, Matthew, Matthew three, chapter 3, verse 3. Verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth the good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. My Lord, my Lord. So what God is saying in that instance, Jesus, which is God, is saying in that instance, is if you are not the real thing, you are eventually going to be cut, cut and thrown into the fire. Mm -hmm. Amen? See, when, when a diamond or something like that goes through the fire, yeah. it comes out shining. But if it's not the real coal, and if it's not the real product, it will be consumed in the fire. Yeah. So what am I saying? All of us are going to go through the fire. The wheat and the tear is going to go through the fire. The wheat's going to produce fruit and food for someone else. The tear is going to burn up. That's what the Bible say. Mm -hmm. Bundle it up and do what? Burn it up. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I'm saying to you, you and I who are producing fruit shall weather the storms of life. Thank you. We all are going to go through the storms, but those doctrines, those false doctrines that are not filled in, built around and surrounding the word of God, which is Jesus Christ came, was buried and died or died rather, was buried and rose again from the dead. And now you and I don't have to live sinful lives because you, he Lord. lived. Thank you, Lord. If Thank that's you, Lord. the truth, amen? Now that truth is what's going to stand forever. Amen. And any other doctrine is what's going to fail. Amen. And so in the other uh, scripture we read where the Great Commission was produced, it was telling us to go ye therefore and produce, right? Yes. And, and, and preach and teach. And so when you preach and teach the right doctrine, People become saved. Amen. Amen. So let me explain some of the pollinate tours. Okay. See, what happens in a nutshell is the insect, the bird, the bat, the, the, the butterfly, things like that. They come to the plant, Pastor, and they go to eat the nectar of the plant that that plant produced. Before it become, produces the fruit, it produces the nectar. And the bee comes to that fr uh, flower to eat of the nectar. The bat comes to eat of the nectar. The butterfly, you may see land on it, comes and eats from the nectar. That's good. The butterfly has a stem that comes out from his beak or from his mouth. You and I can't see with our naked eye, but it comes out. It goes down into the flower and licks the, the, the liquid. The bee comes and eats the liquid. The bat comes. It got. Some, it has something that comes out. His tongue comes out and licks the nectar. Here's the concept. When they come to the flower, for their reasons, God has a reproductive system in place. Mm -hmm. Amen? You, They're not coming to make the world a better place like the cicada's not coming to do that. The bee is going to eat. It's going to gather so that it can build. Amen? It just so happens that when the bee is doing what it's supposed to do, we eat because of it. Right. When you're doing what you're supposed to do in Christ, someone's going to eat well because you have produced good fruit. Thank you. Amen. And so when the bee, the bee seems to be our strongest pollinator. And the pollination concept that I'm laying out to you this morning is of the fivefold ministry. The bee would be like the fivefold ministry. Okay, because the bee is the most busiest of them all, mm -hmm. of the pollinators. See, a pollinator is someone who carries the pollen to another place and lays off pollen. Amen. So when the bee comes to the tree, I mean, go, comes to the flower and it buzzes, it has a muscle that buzzes, not just the wings. It has a muscle that buzzes. And when it buzzes, it produces vibration. That vibration causes the pollen to land on its furry fur. Once that happens, the bee goes up, goes to another flower, amen, 
goes to eat that, and when it lands on that flower, it takes the pollen, or the pollen from the other flower drops off on that flower, and it becomes germinated. And this is how the pollination takes place. Amen? Amen? So the concept is for you and I to become a pollinator. Amen? Someone to take the word of God. Take it first. Carry that word of God in your journey, in your day-to-day -day living, in your life, and drop that pollen off to another carrier. Amen? Amen? Drop that pollen off to another situation. Drop that pollen off to another person so that they can develop in Christ, so that they can develop as a person, a develop as a saint. Amen? Amen? Get to where you are. Amen? Where you so like and so deserve and so enjoy being as a person, get somebody else to that place. Amen? Amen. Galatians 5.22. Turn there for me. And as you're turning to the Galatians 5.22, I want you to remember... To become a pollinator. Amen? I want you to turn to Galatians chapter, 20, uh, chapter 5, verse 22. The concept I'm laying out to you is for you and I to become a pollinator. Amen? Someone who drops off. Someone who's being fruitful and multiplying. And this is my little pollinator man. Amen? My little pollinator man is a stick man. I could draw better than that, but for time's sake, I'm drawing a stick man, and one day I'm going to be as thin as he. Amen? All right. But here's the concept. Here's the concept of a pollinator. Amen? As you are turning to... Galatians 5. Pastor, can you read Galatians 5 for me, please? Yes. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. It reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Amen, amen, amen. So here's my concept of being a pollinator. Amen? As you... Walk throughout this week. I want you to exercise pollination this week. I want you to exercise like a bee would do. Remember our title in the beginning? Bees fruitful. Yes. Amen. I want you to act as if you are a bee. For some of you all who have the five-fold ministry gift, I want you to act as a bee. For some of you all who have the other gifts found in the spirit, amen, I want you to act as a bee. I want you to go and pollinate. I want you to fill yourself up with the word. Amen. And I want you to go out this very week. And I just want you to reach five people. Just reach five people. And here's specifically how I would like for you to reach those people. Turn to Galatians chapter 5, verse 2, 22. Read that for me. Verse 2 or 22? Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Amen. I just want you to practice this. No. Let me answer this question right away. I don't want you to go out tomorrow and save the world. Amen. I don't want you to get in a pulpit and preach tomorrow. Amen. I don't want you to gather everybody on your job and try to do a Bible study. I don't want you to necessarily go out and pass out tracts tomorrow. All I'm saying to you is be a pollinator. Pick five people that's in your life that causes you to have to demonstrate love to them. And I want Amen. you to show love to somebody who needs love. Yes. Amen? There's somebody in your life right now that's causing your patience to wear thin. Well, in that case, I want you to show kindness this week. Amen? Amen? I want you to show them kindness this week. For another person... You're about to give up on them because you're tired of their behavior. I want you to demonstrate to them a time-tested attribute called faithfulness. Yes, faithful. I want you to become faithful to someone this very week. Amen. I want you to grab the concept. My writing is, my little utensil is not acting right right now, but I think you get the concept. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want you to exercise 
this week to somebody who's wearing out your patience and, and causing you to want to talk rough to them or apply roughness to them, and I want you to show them gentleness. I want you to be gentle this week. Amen? Amen. And for you who like to say what you want to say when you want to say it because you can do it, I want you to purposefully exercise with someone this week self-control. Self-control. Now, if you go out this very week and reach five people with this, this is what's going to happen. Those five might go out. Amen. And they might reach one or two. This one might reach five. Amen. Somebody can be kind to somebody. Sometimes opening up a door is kind. Sometimes helping a lady across the street or a man across the street is kind. And sometimes, you know, being loving is kind. Amen. Over here, somebody needs to be faithful. So when you see these numbers multiply, yeah, or when you these when you do this first layer, everything you did multiplies. Mm -hmm. So you can't necessarily see the multiplication happening down here. Yeah. You can't see that the people you reached reached some. Hallelujah. And the people that they reached reached some. Amen. And it all stemmed from you exercising this right here. So people of God, become a pollinator. Become a pollinator of the word of God. Amen. Carry the word of God with you yeah. and give it to somebody else. Amen. Amen. Don't hibernate your gift. Do not hold back who you are. Hallelujah. Do not withhold who you are from somebody who could use your attributes. Do not, uh, uh, or should I say, act like the cicada. Come here and reproduce after your own kind. And furthermore, be like the bee. Go and pollinate the flower so that others can eat the fruit that you produce. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I pray that this message has encouraged your spirit, has encouraged your soul. It is my sincere desire Thank you, Lord. that you would know Jesus Christ in the Amen. fellowship of his suffering. I implore you that if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Thank you, Jesus. then you cannot be an effective pollinator. You can't effectively show love. Because love is God, and God is, yes, Amen. love, Thank you, Lord. kindness, patience, gentleness, self-control. These are all attributes or gifts or, or, or fruits of the Spirit. You cannot employ fruits of the Spirit without knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. So I encourage you this morning, throw up your hands with me and say the prayer of faith with me right now and get into the kingdom of God so that he can start to use who you are and what you were supposed to be to cause someone else to come to know him. Amen? Amen. Repeat this prayer after me. Father, I come to you, Father, I come to you. in the name, in the of, name Jesus, of Jesus, asking you, asking you to help me to help become, to become a, pollinator, a pollinator, a person, a person that, carries that carries your word and delivers it and delivers to, someone to someone else so that I, so that can, I can produce, produce good fruit. Fruit that helps people live. Fruit that makes the world a better place. Save me. Fill me full of your spirit. And cause me to be effective about kingdom work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you are one who has said that prayer before, then I ask you right now to become what you're supposed to become. Yes, thank you. Become the pollinator that you are. Yes. Amen. Amen. Pastor, do you have anything to add? I just want to say this? thank you for the word. Thank you for the teaching. God Amen. bless you. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. We love you. We we, we magnify the Lord Jesus with you. Yeah. I ask that you stay tuned for our Wednesday Bible study coming up. Amen. I pray that God will enrich your spirit yes. through the teachings that are coming forth from Inspired Life Ministries. Remember to visit us at www.ilm247.org where you'll find us there ready to encourage your spirit. Amen. 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 We love you. But yes. more importantly, God loves you. Remember, let's go and grow together. Hey, I love it. Let's Amen. grow together. Amen. Guys, be a good pollinator. Amen.